Okay, we're going to look at some problems. Let's look at 9.13. A block, a block launched at a speed v down an incline slides down the incline. So there is friction between the block and incline. And into a spring. Okay, slides down and there's friction between the incline and the block. And it slides into the spring where it slows to zero speed as the spring compresses. Okay, so it's going at a certain speed, it's interacting with the <coughs> with the incline, and there's friction, and then it compresses the spring and, and becomes, uh, it slows down to zero velocity. Okay, draw an energy diagram for this process using a system consisting of the block the block, the spring, the earth, okay, the earth, and the incline. Okay, there's the incline, okay. All right, so draw an energy diagram for this process you, uh, that includes all of these objects, okay. So now we have to consider what are our different energy um, types. Well, we've got delta K, we've got delta U. These are all the, the the different the different energies that we can consider. We've got delta E thermal, right? We've got delta E source, and then we've also got work done. Okay, these are all the ideas that we have. Now we have to ask ourselves, which one of these um, is changing during uh, this during this motion? Okay, so kinetic energy is definitely changing because it starts at velocity v and then becomes zero. So we're going to have some kind of change in kinetic energy. Um, our potential energy does that change? Well, yes, because we're including the Earth. Whenever we include the Earth in our system okay please make sure you understand that we also have a change in potential energy um, the block we're including this this uh, incline here that surface right we're including the surface in our system so there's going to be friction so there's going to be a change in thermal energy uh, source energy no we don't consider source energy there's no fuel that's being burnt there's no you're not pushing it using um, some kind of chemical reaction in your muscles. There's none of that. So we have thermal energy, but we don't have source energy. Um, oh, and also we have potential energy due to the spring, right? So that, that that's twice. We've got a change in two potential energies, the spring and the earth. So let's see what happens here. And... and I should have done this. Um, this is our system, right? That's our system that includes all of these objects. Okay. So this is this is a. So our kinetic energy we know goes from a a uh, a positive value to zero, so it decreases. Okay. So our delta k is a negative value. We've got our potential energy due to gravity also decreases because it's going down. Our potential energy due to the spring increases because the spring is compressed, right? So you're storing potential energy. So potential energy due to the spring has increased. And because we are including the surface and the, the crate, what is this A block, whatever it is, um, there is friction between them, so the thermal energy increases. Okay, hope you got that. Now, B, repeat part A using a system of just the block and the incline. So now, now we have to change our system and change the way that we are analyzing the energy. Okay. Now our system is just the block and this incline there, right? Just the block and the incline. 
Okay? So everything else is external. So before we had the Earth in our system, and so we looked at potential energy changes. We had the spring in our system, so we looked at potential energy changes due to the spring. Okay? But now all we have is the block and the surface. So again, the block slows down, so we have negative delta K. The sur both surfaces are included in our system, so the thermal energy goes up. But now, whereas before we looked at the potential energy changes, sorry, that's the two potential energy changes because they were in incorporated into our system, now we look at the work done by those two objects. So, the when when you compress a spring, the potential energy of the spring goes up. That's what we saw here. But the work, but when the spring becomes external, okay, then it has uh, it applies a force, and it does negative work. Negative work. Why does it do negative work? Because it applies a force in it's applying a force in that direction, but the object is moving in that direction. So the spring does negative work. That's why you've got a negative work here. Okay. So make sure you understand that if you incorporate it in your system, you are increasing the potential energy in the spring. But if you if it's not incorporated in your system, the spring does negative work because it's slowing down the object. Similarly for the earth, if you incorporate it in your system, the, the potential energy is negative because the object moves down, right? But if the earth is excluded from your system, then we need to consider the work that it does. And because gravity is pointing down and the, dis the displacement is down, right? It does positive work. So both those vectors are in the same direction. Both the force and the displacement are in the same direction. Okay. C. Why can't you use the block alone in your system? Well, again, we've spoken about this. If you've been following the videos, we've spoken about this multiple times. If you just use the block alone, then we don't know how much thermal energy goes into the block because friction heats up both the block and the surface. So we need to include the surface and we need to include both surfaces, the block and the surface, to, to accurately account for our thermal energy. Okay, so if it's just the block, then we don't know how much um, thermal energy that friction has imparted into the block. Alright, okay, I hope that helps.